This is a Socialist News and Views special interview. So yeah, so we shall we just jump in? Um, sure, sure. So on Socialist News and Views, we let folks introduce themselves. Do you want to just tell listeners who you are? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Eddie Espinosa, and I am the Green Party nominee for Texas Railroad Commissioner. Now, the Railroad Commission name is misleading because the commission has nothing to do with railroads and it right. has everything to do with overseeing and regulating the fossil fuel industry in Texas. And there are three commissioners on that, uh, on that commission and all three of them are Republican. And it is well known in Austin that the Texas railroad commission is a failed agency. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, you can, uh, go to my website, uh, espinosafortex.com, and I'll spell it out, E-S-P-I-N-O-Z-A, the number four, T-X.com. And there you can uh, donate to my campaign, and also we have our information in Spanish, and uh, it's, it's a good website. It has Great. good information as far as what our vision is for the Texas Railroad Commission and uh, also mentioning some of the problems that we face with uh, with oil and gas wells that are contaminating water, soil, and mm. air. And yeah, it's I it's a it's a big problem, Nick. If we truly knew the the scope of of this, we would be very afraid, very right. very afraid. I I want to get into that a little bit more. I'm just curious, and you maybe you don't know. How did it get named the Texas? I'm still clear. Texas Railroad Commission. It has nothing to do with the railroad. Does that? How did? Do yeah, probably back in, came to be. Yeah, and probably like in the uh, early 1900s, they were probably moving uh, petrol or oil via oh, right. railroads, and the name stuck. Mm. And it's challenging for us because we have to explain. Right. what they actually do and really it's a it's a ploy by the fossil fuel industry and that's right. how they're able to maintain they've been able to maintain power of that commission for the past 50 plus years yeah and they you know that's a transparency issue obviously because if people don't know what the commission's doing they can't you know uh uh look at the commission as a way to like change the way things are um you mentioned some of this you know you mentioned it's on your website um, they're not, you know, it sounds like they're not really moving a lot of the oil by trains anymore. A lot of the issues are, like you said, around wells. What are those big issues uh, that the that the commission needs to work on, and why is it so important that a green uh, runs for this position? Okay, well, global warm because of global warming, the Earth is thawing, mm -hmm. and as the Earth thaws there is natural methane being released into the atmosphere. So if you go to Siberia or, if you, uh, you know, you, you understand mm -hmm. Siberia, uh, you know, close to the Arctic Circle, that area is thawing and an incredible amount of methane is being released into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And we, we really can't do anything about that. But what we can control is the methane, the man-made methane being released into the atmosphere. And right now, the state of Texas is probably one of the, I would say, top five methane polluters on the planet. So it is essential that we stop this methane from uh, this uh, man-made methane emissions from going into the atmosphere. Now, the methane issue is a problem for, it's going to be a problem for the whole globe. The faster we can stop these methane uh, emissions, the better off we're going to be. Now, in Texas, we also have the problem that some of these oil and gas wells are leaking toxic uh fluids from from the 
from the fracking process mm -hmm. and that toxic fluid there's so much of it that it's seeping in in the in the permian basin in west texas it's seeping into aquifers so in texas we have three aquifers that are lost there's nothing we can do about it i mean some of the some of this toxic fluid is radioactive Right. So the, the three those three aquifers are lost, and also uh, they are wanting to. Let me just get this information for you, real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are they are wanting to dump eight. Get this number. I mean, I I have a hard time, right? Wrapping you know, our heads around believing it, yeah. this, but I've I've already double checked this. Eight. They want to. There's the two uh, fossil fuel corporations turned in a. Uh, uh, a request to dump, get this, 18 million gallons per day of oil field wastewater into the tributaries that feed the Pecos River. Mm. So the big, big problem in Texas is what do we do with all this wastewater? Now, Texas can be a, an example of what how we fix this problem because we know it's also a problem in Pennsylvania. It's also a problem in New Mexico and in Oklahoma, all the oil producing states, they have this problem. So one of the things that the Green Party wants to do is ban fracking. Mm. Fracking is bad news. It must be banned all over the country. And a great place to start is the state of Texas. Now, also because of the long history of the of of oil and gas uh uh corporations running the show in texas we have a hundred plus years of contamination that we have to deal with right so you're talking about over a million oil and gas wells that are probably gonna need to be replugged some of these plugs are from the 1930s mm. so these plugs start to go bad and it's uh they have the possibility uh, it's possible that they contaminate our freshwater mm. sources like what happened in the in the permian basin but right now texas is being run by the fossil fuel industry and the texas railroad commission is not doing its job as far as protecting Texas ecosystems and Texas families. Matter of fact, you go out to West Texas and you turn on a top tap water, it's going to have uh, oily smell right. and taste to it. So that those problems that are happening in the Permian Basin are starting to move west. So the Permian Basin is pretty much lost. And now the next battleground is the Eagle Ford Shell where they want to use the same practice or do the same practices that they did in West Texas, they want to do that in the Eagle Ford shell. Now, the Eagle Ford shell, imagine a, a line from Laredo, Texas, to San Antonio, Texas, and that area is in play. And unless we get someone else in, into that commissioner's seat, right? We are we are facing some dark times in Texas. Yeah, I, 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 you were talking about the methane. Um, uh, I, I remember I was watching a hearing, um, federal hearing on that, and just the amount of methane that's escaping from these, um, uh, from these uh, oil and gas uh, drilling operations and stuff. It's amazing. I mean, they're making so much money. You know, they're just releasing this methane. If they were capturing it, they could actually be making money off the methane. You know, capitalists, they're all trying to make their money, right? But it's right, like they're right. making so much money, they don't even care if like a billion dollars worth of methane leaks out or whatever. Yeah. And I was just looking right. at this article. This is from the Guardian uh, from the Guardian um, in uh, early last year. It says revealed 1000 super emitters uh, uh, risk triggering climate tipping point. And it says that in 2022, more than a thousand super emitters uh were responsible for a huge amount of the methane and that amount was something like 67 million running cars and it also said that 40 percent of the uh uh 40 percent of the uh methane that's uh human caused methane emission comes from 
leaks from fossil fuel exploration, production, and transport. And it had actually risen by 50% just from 2000 to 2019. So there's just this massive amount of methane coming out. And then, like you said, that global warming, because methane's like 80 times worse than uh, carbon dioxide, then now you have, yeah, these uh, this methane that's under the ground that's coming up, you know, in Siberia and Alaska, the ground is thawing and these indigenous yeah. communities in the north of Alaska are like, right. the houses are like sinking into the ground and stuff because it's thawing. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's a huge problem. And like, yeah, and no, you know, nobody is doing anything near what no. uh, needs to be done no. to uh, no. uh, to tackle this. Um, right. And I wanted to make yeah. a quick yeah, yeah, yeah. comment, Nick. Yeah. One of the things that I, I, I was stunned is that these corporations are so greedy that even the Dallas Fort Worth area is dealing with this problem. Mm. Our Arlington, Arlington is a middle to upper class uh, city, and they are releasing methane in Arlington, Texas. Right. So if the Dallas Fort Worth area is in play, in the entire state of Texas is in danger of right. being uh, of soil, water, and air being contaminated. The Permian basis is pretty much lost. Right. The panhandle of Texas is having issues with this, with the methane and the contamination mm -hmm. of groundwater. South Texas is having the problem. East Texas is having a problem. Right. And we know that fracking is fracking operations are going on in the San Antonio Austin area because they're starting to get earthquakes. Yep. So Texas has pretty much become, I, I hate to say it, it's become an open sewer for the fossil fuel industry. And they get a free pass. Right. And yeah. the, the Green Party want wants to attack the problem now. Now is the time to attack, plug and clean these wells, and also begin to decarbonize the Texas economy. And we know it can be done because we have solar, wind, and batteries that can pick up the slack. So the, the Green Party, out of the four candidates that are running in the race, the Green Party is the only one for calling a ban on fracking. I mean, that is yep. just... I mean, it's ludicrous to be doing it right. because it, it it makes no economic sense and it makes no environmental sense because it's cheaper to get your energy from solar, wind, and batteries than mm -hmm. fossil fuel garbage. And right. Texas needs to break its fossil fuel industry and we need to stop the, the export of liquefied natural gas, which is occurring in Brownsville. So yeah. it's a it's a it's a bad situation that the state of Texas is in. But right now, the politicians in Austin, they're they're it's pretty their shows being run by Texas Republicans mm -hmm. and they do not have the public's interest in mind. No. I mean, I, I posted the, a couple of days ago on social media that, uh, you know, while while we sleep, while our families sleep, this contamination is 24 hours a day seven days a week, nonstop. Right. And Texas families are the ones that are paying the price. Billionaires in Austin are, are, are the Texas billionaires are, are doing well. They're right. selling this garbage, but right. the average Texan is, and the, and our ecosystems are paying the price for their greed. Yeah. I, uh, 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 yeah, I just want one. Well, of course we saw with the, um, this is kind of going back a ways, but the deep water horizon oil spill in the Gulf, you know, how much the Republicans care about uh, the environment that was going on. And then they dumped all those uh, dispersants into the water there and, you know, killed off tons of fish, destroyed fishing industries. But I just wanted to say, so, you know, well, you can come to Texas is a good place to start, um, like you said. And obviously, you know, there there needs to be huge national well, and even international movement on this stuff. Um, right, right now sure. in the Green Party, um, I believe 2024 Green Party presidential uh, convention is coming up in August, but it sounds like Jill Stein has uh, gotten all the um, delegates uh, she needs yeah, for yeah. a majority. You know, were you supporting Jill Stein and, uh, oh, and are you happy with the results? And 
And what, oh, do you, what do you think the Green Party can do nationally? What are the, what are the things we can do nationally uh, that Green Party? I I, I I honestly think the White House is in play. Mm. I honestly think that. I mean, you know, my some of my campaign uh, staff is like, well, that's going to be a long shot. But she has enough delegates. She's going to be the Green Party nominee. So that that's going to leave four. You know, Biden, Trump, RFK, and Dr. Stein. Out of the four, the only one that is calling for an end to the genocide in Gaza is Dr. Stein. And RFK, you know, his pick for vice president was not a good pick. Uh, he picked a billionaire. And I, I'm willing to bet that Dr. Stein is going to have a great presidential pick. And if they allow Dr. Stein on the debate stage, she is going to run circles around the other three candidates, and it won't even be close. So here in Texas, we want to start, you know, we already stuck, we're already talking to voters about, hey, the White House is in play. And we can do this. And uh, like she, someone posted that if it's a four, a four person race, 26% of the vote takes the White House. 26% mm. of the vote. And I know for a fact that we have way more progressives in Texas than 26%. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we, we're definitely, you know, rooting for Dr. Stein and, and we need, Texas needs her in the White House because she's also the only one calling for an end to empire. And I guess more than any other state, Texas needs all that money that is going to Gaza and Ukraine and maintaining these foreign bases. We need to bring that money to the homeland and we need to invest in our infrastructure, which means preparing for these droughts, which Texas is already in a drought, mm -hmm. uh, preparing for, you know, heavier rains and preparing our grid because our grid is going to be exposed to high heat and mm -hmm. these long transmission lines are going to be under a heavy load. So transmission lines exposed to high heat and a heavy load is not good because they will, they will go bad. Yeah. I just wanted to say, they, so they will fail. I guess I should say they will fail. So um, I just wanted to pull up. So, uh, locally, I uh, personally, I have been working on the Cornell West campaign, um, but I there was a really good piece of uh, information uh, for Jill Stein that came out. I don't know if you saw the um, uh, the uh, uh, in um, it was the uh, Arab American Anti-Discrimination uh, Committee. I think they had done a um, uh, they had done a survey. And so this was a uh, presidential uh, survey result among Arab American voters who voted in 2020 um, and they kind of like ranked who they were going to support. And 25% uh, of those uh, that were um, polled said that they were going to be supporting Jill Stein uh, for president. 23% uh, was uncommitted. 21 was uh, Dr. West. And then it kind of went down 2% were supporting Trump. But I mean, yeah. So you're, so like you said, you're painting a picture. There's some significant constituencies uh, that are not at all happy with the choices that they have. Um, uh, especially in some of these um, battleground, you know, swing states, as they as they call them, that are definitely looking for something, you know, that rather than just the ongoing empire, money for the rich, destroying the environment, right. Right. killing, you know, right. people overseas and all that stuff. So it's pretty, you know, I think I think this election has the most potential of any we've ever seen to um, have a significant showing uh, for uh, uh, a candidate that's outside the mainstream parties, and I hope. I hope that we can take advantage of it. Um, for sure. And for of course, sure. you know, I'd love to see, you know, if I would, if Jill Stein won the presidency, I would be happy. <laughs> that would yeah. be good. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Here in Texas, we're only running two statewide candidates. Yep. One for president, which will be Dr. Stein and myself for Texas Railroad Commission. So if we can take these two seats, you'll see the change, the progressive change happen quick. Mm -hmm. Very quick. You'll see the end. We'll stop shipping uh munitions to to Israel and we'll bring the Gaza the Gaza genocide we'll bring the genocide to an end. And mm -hmm. uh you know we need Dr. Stein in the White House. I mean to be honest with you, it's uh it, 
it's a tough situation for everyone. And if you want to vote for your family's future, mm -hmm. if that's something that you're you're concerned about, about your access to clean water, right. then Dr. Stein and the Green Party is the best option. And it's not Dr. Stein. It's also the Green Party platform. If, mm -hmm. you, le if you read the platform at the national level and at the state level, it's a great roadmap to get us out of the mess that we will be inheriting. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I voted for Stein previously. Um, I, yeah, this is, this is uh really great. Like I said, I think we have so much potential uh, this year um, again for, you know, for working people and for all of our families, if we really get organized and I just hope we can uh, take advantage of it in all of our States as much as possible, because I think people are starting to see through the facade that supposedly, you know, these mainstream yeah. parties are concerned with democracy that they're concerned with, climate change even like they have all these conferences on climate change but they don't do anything uh, about it yeah well, i really yeah. appreciate you speaking with it yeah you want to go ahead and and, and yeah and just else you want to share uh, yeah a couple of other things let me just tell you how ridiculous the texas railroad commission is <laughs> right so there, there's about uh this is the end of april there's 460,000 oil and gas and wastewater injection wells in the state mm -hmm. uh and we they only have 187 inspectors. Oh wow. So yeah, if that's... you do the math, 460,000 divided by 187, that's 2,460 wells per inspector. That's that's and, and let that's me never let me go happen. on. Yeah. Let me go on with the pipelines. 400,000 miles of pipeline in Texas. Right. Only 72 inspectors. So if you do the math, that's 5,556 miles of pipeline per inspector. So we, we need to we need to change our the way we're thinking and right. we need to plug and clean up the fossil fuel industry mess that we have and we need to decarbonize the economy. And, you know, and there's simple things we can do, like going to a four day work week, you know, right. you, with no loss and with no loss in pay, by the way, uh, because that'll decrease your energy demands. And it'll also, you know, be a uh, better for families so that they can spend time together. Yeah. And it's been ridiculous them making people, you know, that could work remotely come into work and drive. You know, some people are driving, you know, you look at the major metropolitan areas, they might be driving for an hour or something and heavy traffic just to go to an office that may or may not have that many people in it and may and yeah, may not, yeah. you know, there's no reason to do that kind of stuff no. unless you, you know, you're doing something where you have to physically move stuff right. or, you know. Yeah, right. Is that both corporate co parties are just operating as business as usual and they have the economy on full throttle. Right. Hey, we, we can't do that right now. We, we need to decrease our energy demands. Absolutely. And uh, it needs to happen ASAP. And the way we start is we put Dr. Stein in the White House and we get this Texas Railroad Commissioner seat. Well, I really appreciate you speaking with me today, Eddie. Uh, it's been really great. And, uh, you know, oh, good thanks, luck, good Nick, luck with your advice. campaign. Oh, thank you. Much appreciated, Nick. And thank <laughs> you for care. having me. And if you ever want to invite me uh, yeah. again, hey, we'll, we'll be here. We'll and talk thank again. you for your listeners and, and your <laughs> audience, too. OK. All right. Have Nick. a good day. Bye. You too. Bye. This has been a Socialist News and Views special interview.